The greatest power you possess is your ability to choose. Join Lowe's Moore as he reveals how you can begin to maximize that power by exploring yourself on the deepest levels and committing to making lasting and positive changes. Get ready to achieve breakthroughs that will lead to accelerated growth and transformation because you are now tuned in to The Blueprint. Good evening, this is Lowe's Moore and welcome back to The Blueprint Podcast. Man, again, uh, once again, I'm excited. Um, I don't know if I'm excited uh, when I heard, uh, you know, summer had ended. I, you know, I, I don't know if I was excited about about that, you know. Uh, and then the weather started getting a little crazy, you know, all of a sudden, man. I, I don't know how it does it, man. Man, nature is amazing, man, because it just said, as soon as it said, summer's over, I mean, it just got crazy outside. And um, but again, hey, all I can say is that we're here, right? We wake up every single day. Um, and every day we wake up, you hear me say it all the time. Every day you wake up, enjoy, enjoy it and make every day your masterpiece. Um, and and once again, man, I want to thank you guys for for your support. And if you don't mind, uh, you know, if you enjoy the blueprint. Uh, please go to uh, Lowe's More the Blueprint on YouTube and subscribe. I'm trying to trying to continually to to grow the podcast to get more viewers. I believe, as I said each and every week, right? Um, that I I believe that when we open up the lives and stories of people, you know, that those lives and those stories have been a blessing to other people particularly during the pandemic, man, during, during the pandemic, we need to be encouraged, right? We, we, we needed motivation during, during the course of the pandemic. And so, but realizing that, you know, we need motivation every single day. I mean, uh, life is sometimes can be, uh, you know, not easy, but, uh, you know, so we need encouragement and, and, and the individuals that I've in it, I'm, it's, it's been a pleasure to interview for now. This is my third season to interview so many people, man. And, and, and they just have been blessed to be a blessing. And sometimes we just hear a person's name and we just think like, Oh man, that guy, that guy, or that, that lady is successful. Uh, that they, they, they woke up one day, they woke up one day and they were successful. No, it's a process, right? Uh, you know, life goes through tests and trials, right? And it's the tests and trials that make us that make us ultimately who we are, right? I mean, you know, let me give you this example real quick, right? I mean, I want to be a great basketball player. I get in the gym, man, and I can look at all the video and I can look at all this different stuff and do my drills and take my shots, right? It it will it yeah, it will not make me a better player. The only way it makes me a better player if I get against a defense. Now, once I get against the defense, then I'll know I'll be a better basketball offensive player if I go against the defense. If I'm just shooting in the gym and doing my dribbling drills and all that kind of stuff, at the end of the day, right, if I don't have no defense, I don't know how good I am, right, and vice versa, right? I got to get in the gym. I can't become a great defensive player unless there's an offensive player on the other side. So in life, right, life is a test and a trial. So each and every day we wake up, man, you know, we get tested. And if we don't get tested, Right. If we don't get tested and overcome those tests, we, we will never mature. We will never grow. So um, and, and so that those are the kind of things that we hear on the blueprint each and every week. People that have been tested through going through trials. And at the end of the day, we see the results of those things. So, again, I want to say thank you and thank you for your support. And, 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 and please don't for, please don't forget to go to Lowe's Mortar Blueprint on YouTube and subscribe right and 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 uh so let me drop this ball they go my ball my this is this is my seed i got my little <coughs> basketball here i call it my seed i call it my pebble you drop your pebble in the pond right and we're expecting the ripple effect of this show so let's get let's get rolling tonight right i gotta give my you know first of all you know kind of on a, a sad note um you know 
my wife and I, uh, my uh, aunt Elaine passed away. Uh, you know, she was laid to rest yesterday, man. Just a, a wonderful, just a, just a wonderful person, man. Um, she's going to be truly missed. Um, and, and we, you know, <coughs> the home going was great. Um, and the one thing it did, sometimes you haven't seen family. Unfortunately, you haven't seen family for a while. Right. And, and yesterday, man, you know, I just wanted to soak in, in the family, you know, after it was all over, we were able to go to a park and we were able to do a little cookout and we was just hanging out, man, just talking about old times and just reminiscing. Right. You know, unfortunately that it was through that, through her passing that caused that to happen. But, but, um, we were able to, you know, share some family experience and memories you know, and, and I said in the last time I was in Pennsylvania with some family members, man, it was for a different occasion. It was three of my three of my cousins retired. Right. Um, and then all those people came out to see those individuals retire. And and so, yeah, we need to do more getting together. Right. Because family, as, as you know, on the show. Right. There are three important things to me. Family, faith, education. Right. Uh, we, we talk about that on every show, right? So, uh, family's number one, God's number one, family's number two, faith, education, man, can't do without either one of those things. So, Hey, let me jump right into it. Um, I want to give you my book of the week. Um, I didn't get this book yet, but I heard the reviews on it. Uh, Carmela Anthony and, uh, where tomorrow's aren't promised. I mean, he, he this is his memoirs, um, you know, as you you know, we just look at Carmelo Anthony and we just think like, hey, Carmelo Anthony, man, he he went to the best of schools. He was in the best neighborhoods and all those kind of things. I don't know if you guys know that Carmelo Anthony was born in New York. Right. But he ended up in Baltimore and he ended up in a tough part of Baltimore. Right. And uh, he's got a new book out. Number one, number one seller in uh, in New York. Um, them bookseller in New York. So uh, grab that book. I'm gonna I'm gonna get me a copy, whether it's on my phone or uh, a, a hard copy. I just need I want to get a copy and read. You know, and and you know, for me, you know, one of the most important things at being su successful in life is becoming a productive and uh, and a productive student. And reading is a real key, right? And I'm always combating illiteracy. So, uh, you know, check out that book. Uh, check out Camelo Anthony. He's more than just a basketball player, man. He's, he's got a, a, you know, a different belief system. Right. And uh, he's strong against social justice issues. So make sure you go out and get you a copy, man, of Camelo Anthony's new book. And then our word of the week. Our word, our word of the week is motivation. Right. Uh, you know, you got to get motivated, have the right attitude, have goals in order to have success. Sometimes you got to come up with ideas. Right. Then you got to perform and then you got to have other people to support you. So my word of the week is motivation. Sometimes maybe you don't feel like doing stuff. You know, sometimes you feel like it's not necessary. Right. But, hey, I, I know for me, man, I, I just wanted to play ball, man. I wasn't thinking about no education, man. I just want to play ball. Right. And but yet my teachers. You know, all my teachers used to motivate me and tell me that, hey, man, you, as well as the ball, you got to get the books. You can't have one without the other. And, and so they motivated me to, to make sure that I stayed in class and make sure I handled my business. So and then number three, my Hill, Hill Hopper, Pierce Hopper affirmation quote moment. It says, do good for others. It will come back to you in unexpected ways. Right. Don't just do good because you think you're going to get something back, man. Just do good because that's what we should do. Right. And when we do good for other people, you never know how that's going. That's a seed. Right. When you plant that seed. You never know how that kindness or how how God is going to re bring that back to you. And and then I think I got my my music of the week. Right. My music of the week is. A gospel song called Champion. Matter of fact, I heard it today too, man. I like I like I love that song, man. 
uh just 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 an awesome song you get a chance to get that uh make sure you go out and get it i mean now we're hearing it every almost every sunday morning in church we're hearing uh uh we're hearing this especially bethel music uh, bethel church music and you it's called champion and then the movie of the week right well the movie for the last couple of weeks <laughs> the, the movie of the week is the woman king Woo! right Man, I, I seen it the first night it came out. Me and my wife, we went to dinner and then went out to see it because we have to support. And then uh, yesterday was uh, my son's Isaiah's birthday. Yeah, it was Isaiah's birthday on yesterday uh, on on Friday. And I want to say happy birthday. Shout out to Isaiah, my son Isaiah. And and we went we went to see the woman king for the second time. And I I, I enjoyed it just as much as I did the first time. Right. And and so yeah, man. I, I wouldn't want to be a guy back then, man, because they was, you know, it was hurting some people, but particularly the men, <laughs> they was getting beat up, up over there, you know. <laughs> but get out there and see that. Um, but I'll say, man, Viola Davis. What can I say? Yeah, yeah, Viola Davis was just, she's just a master, you know. And, and you know, I love Viola, man. Her acting skills are amazing, you know. So make sure you get out there and see that. And then I got one more shout out. I think I got um, my father-in-law. We're happy. I want to give him a happy heavenly birthday shout out. Truly missed, you know. Um, you know, his sister was the one who passed away. Uh, that we that we celebrated on yesterday, a home going. And let me tell you something, man. <laughs> if, if if Poppy was there, Lloyd Wallace. Everybody know Lloyd P. Wallace. Assistant principal in Yonkers and Lincoln, and just a heck of a role model, man. If he was there yesterday, man, I mean, we were laughing yesterday, but he would have been a practical joker, joker, man. He would have did so many things doing that thing, and we would be laughing and just cracking up, man. It's truly missed, but I want to say happy birthday to him, and as well as I want to say happy birthday to my nephew. We call him we call him Jolly, but Calvin Hines Jr. I want to say happy birthday to him too as happy well. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Didn't Jolly just celebrate his birthday? Ah, man. His birthday's in January. January. Oh, his birthday's in January. I don't know what we was doing. Well, well, he went with us, so I'm, just, you know, I just thought it was his birthday too. <laughs> it's Khalil's birthday. And Khalil's DeAndre, birthday. And DeAndre. And DeAndre's birthday. Well, well, happy early birthday to Jolly. <laughs> <laughs> It's in January, but we're going to give him a shout out right now. <laughs> so just in case we forget in January. But uh, <laughs> and, and so uh, I think that's it for the shout outs and birthdays. We got some more. We got something else. Let's see. What else we have? Oh, yeah. How can we forget? Hey, we want to give a big shout out to the uh, Las Vegas Aces. You know, the WNBA, they won the championship, you know. Hey man, that that's zip, seriously, man, man. They've been, you know, I, Bill Lambert was trying to win the championship when he was the coach there, right? These girls have been working. These ladies have been working hard for years. You know, I was gonna be happy either way. Connecticut, if Connecticut won, I would have been extremely happy because they never won either, right? And Las Vegas had never won either, so I was happy for whoever won um and you know but shout out man the WNBA is just growing by leaps and bounds you know and you know I also want to get a a, a shout out again because we shouted out last week right uh to the WABA right and and I want to get a shout out to my wife um the Mount Vernon Shamrocks they're in the final four of the championships of the WABA next week Next weekend, they're going to be in Greensboro, North Carolina, playing in the championship, the final four. There's going to be all-star game, three-point shooting contest. Man, I'm looking forward to getting down there on uh, on next Thursday, man, just hanging out, just enjoying the festivities. And, um, you know, congratulations to my wife and her team, her, you know, her ownership team and and the great work they're doing. So, so um, I think – Uh-oh. She's got a uh, – Zanae. Oh, Zanae. Happy birthday, Zanae. Man, we're going to put a picture of you up there next week, man. Just shout you out. And definitely without a doubt. Yeah. So uh, so without further ado, I'm going to show you this highlight. 
and then I'm going to introduce my guests for this evening. The third, and the Hawks are within 13. They can pull it to within 11. They'll wait for the last shot. They want Eddie Johnson to go right and give it up, which they did. Wes Matthews, a tough shot. Davis will fire. Hit the back rim. Matthews with a rebound. He has Jordan on the right, Woolridge on the left. Takes it to the hoop himself. That's what happened. This guy's made a big difference. Kill missing his first shot of the game. Rebound to the Hawks. Free Rollins. Flying down the court is Matthews. Oh, yes. Great shot. It'll go. And he is fouled. Because he is a big presence there. Matthews, a nice backward cut right down the middle. Well, is in the fourth period. Teagle goes up. And here's Wes Matthews. The insurance playmaker. Good fake to Cooper. Basket counts. And the foul. He wanted to get on the scoreboard there. That's why it was a good fake to Cooper. He was going all the way to the hoop. And getting in the box score for the Lakers. To Woolridge. Fakes. Down low to Steve Johnson. Goes over the middle. Kicks it out. Jordan's wide open to fire. Misses again. Tipped around in there. Matthews got the ball. Couple west. Yeah, Bagley's sagging over. Jordan kicks it out. Matthews is open with four. Hits the jump shot with two. One second. Very impressive. Here's Hubbard spinning. Ball stolen away by Jordan with a quick hand. Here's Matthews to Johnson. And the Bulls are running. All right. Yeah. We got Wes Matthews Sr. You know, when you get, you know, when you get a senior on you, you know, you know. Wes, what's up, man? What's up, brother Lowe's? And tell your wife I said hello and the family I said hello. And I said out my condolences to you on your loss, bro. But yeah, you man. Know, I'm always here for you. You already know. Yes, but sir. I like that highlight. You saw that last highlight when you saw Bert running out the way and I banged down on <laughs> <Kale's> head. <though. laughs> yeah, I seen that, you know. And, and you know, I said when I was watching the highlight, and they said, Jordan's on the right. Oh, he took it right by, he took it himself. <laughs> yeah, man, hey, man. Hey, hey got, got to get the scoreboard some kind of way, man. Mike got it too much, man. Hey, Mike, Mike got to give it up every now and then. You just had to hit, you just had to hit the shot or he would have gave it back to you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that was my philosophy. Yeah, you know, man. Yeah, yeah. I throw it to you. You better score because if, if you don't score, I ain't going to throw it to you again. <laughs> well, you know, we, we come from the old school cut, that old cut, cut cloth, man. Man, if you don't score, we, we'll do it ourselves. We'll give you a shot at it. But point guards are serious about that. If you don't make a basket, you ain't getting it back. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, man. Welcome to the Blueprint, man. Thank you, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Glad to yeah. be here. Yeah, man. Um, I think I got a. Well, before I get to that, let, let's let's talk a little bit about. No, no, no. I got I got to start off with this, man. <laughs> you know, I just, just got to start off. It's a. I think I got a curiosity. Uh, it's a curiosity question. A questionnaire. That's question. Yeah. It's a picture, man. Let, let me show you this picture. <laughs> All right. Huh? I don't know. If it, is it up there? I think I think Wes is getting choked or something like that. Somebody choking Wes. Oh man, you ain't for the real that X Men stuff. That cost me ten thousand dollars, man. It's not up there. Oh man. Okay, where's well, the curiosity? Oh, well, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I get it every single day, man. But it was uh, shout out to the photographer because it only lasted thirty less than two seconds, and uh, <laughs> he was a little pissed off because we were about to put we were about to uh, we were about to sweep them in game four. And so he he lost his mind a little bit, but that cost me five thousand dollars. They find me because the next day he came to New York to play in the garden, and some of my boys from Bridgeport met him in a hotel, and they find me. <laughs> they yeah, find yeah, me yeah. five thousand. I was only making ninety thousand. They find me five. I like, come on, man. I I was I was in L.A. I got nothing to do with that. Oh but, uh, man. But it was it was it was it was more of a great photo than actual than the actual action. But uh it cost me a lot of money for that one though. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. When I seen it, I was like looking at some pictures and I was like, man, there go Wes. Yeah, I, was like, yeah. I, was, I was like, yo, who is Xavier McDaniel choking? 
Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? But but they didn't show the part. I mean, you got to see the video. The video will tell it all. The picture was the picture was should have been a great photographer. That should have been an Emmy winner. But the <laughs> actual picture, the actual happening was by the time he finished grabbing me, Mike Cooper had already body slammed him. Mike came from from the other side of the floor, <laughs> smashed him, and got him off me. And then they had to separate us all, and then we we all got fired for that. Oh uh, yeah, I was looking like, man, he choking my man Wes. What's up with that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he won't try that today though. <laughs> That's for sure. I hey, I didn't think he would try it then, but he's a little no. crazy. So <laughs> no, he was, you know, no, he was a little off there. Plus, you know, he was a little upset they was about to get swept. You know. I think James Wooden had just gave him a triple double, so he was pissed off. But I just got in the game. You know, I'm coming in the last two minutes to close the show. Hey, well, you know he ain't gonna he ain't gonna grab the big guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he gonna get the little guy. He gonna go with the <laughs> Yeah, well, he he he, he know better now. He won't he'll rethink that one over again. Cause yeah, like man. I said, my boys from the port, they were at the they they got me fine because they was outside his hotel. And then they find me another two grand because he didn't play that night. I like I got nothing to do with that. <laughs> they know? thought you called up the boys from Connecticut and told them to get down there. <laughs> exactly. They thought I called the crew up, man. You know, I got you know you know we keep crews on standby, bro. <laughs> oh man. And and I tell you, like one time, man, I think a Xavier he was with Seattle, right? Yep. And and uh he got into it with Charles Oakley. Right. Remember, I don't know if you remember that at the garden, he got into it with Charles Oakley. And, yeah. and uh at the end, you know, they, they they had to break him up and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, Xavier said, I'll see you at your car, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, the wrong dude. That's yes, the wrong dude to talk to. I know. So oh there. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, no, there you go. Yeah, that was that was the wrong dude to talk to, Charles Oakley like that. <laughs> so, I'm gonna get you. Yeah, yeah. So you know what ended up happening was like Xavier went to his car. Oakley didn't come and get his car until the next day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, probably, oh, probably thought he was. Talk, oh, probably thought he was talking crazy. Oh, had something else to do. He probably had a couple parties to go to in New York. That oh way. man. Oh, man. <laughs> But you remember back then, man. You know, we had we handled things with our hands, man. We, you know, we didn't talk. You know, it wasn't like these doo doos just pushing and punching and pushing and pushing and scared to move around. It was no blood, no foul back then, and okay. we had no problem about going to nobody else's locker room back then, bro. Especially yeah. when you cross that line, you can't cross that line. Oh yeah, I, I mean, whew. I mean, we were talking at the golf outing, right? We were talking at the golf outing when uh. When I posted up Calvin Murphy, right? I posted him up, turned around, slapped the glass on him. You know, <laughs> they took the ball out real fast, man. He dribbled at me like 100 miles an hour and then elbowed me in the throat, man. Next thing you know, <laughs> we was at half court arms and we swinging and punching and stuff like that. I, okay. I, I, I told Calvin, I said, look, man, I know you, man. You don't snuck a couple of big dudes and ran up their chest. I ain't yes. the big dude, man. I'm from Mount Vernon, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. See, that's the thing. You had to stand your ground because remember, Calvin was like seven and oh. He was knocking the big dudes out because he was Calvin was running up on people. Pop wow, you know. He had that old Connecticut sucker punch move. So he went up through you and started smacking you and punching on you. But uh but back then, man, you know, it was a fun basketball. We played it hard. We had no we had no choice but to be, you know, because we were all men, you know, men. Once you cross the line from basketball, you know it was already on. So yeah, but yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was. That was NBA at its best. I don't know about this new basketball. They play, you know? <laughs> so, so anyway, let's let I'm a, I'm gonna digress for a moment, man. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, you know, let's talk about Wes Matthews. This is one of the you know nice things about the show is that we get to know, we get to go back. And you know, talk about uh, mom and dad growing up, siblings, you know, and how it transitioned, and and their and and their focus in regards to the importance of family, uh, to importance of faith and education. So, so, talk a little bit about that growing up in Connecticut, and uh, you know, mom and dad and family. Well, my mom and dad were my biggest supporters. Uh, I lost my father about eight years ago, who was who I'm a namesake, uh, Wesley Jr. But my dad supported me, my mom supported me, 
Uh, believe it or not, I learned a game of basketball from my sister. My sister was a better basketball player than I was. Mm. And before, uh, before, you know, there was no college basketball for women back in the early 70s. There was nowhere for women to go. But she instilled in me that hard work. She instilled in me that playground toughness. She instilled in me that if you want to be the best, you got to be up early. You got to stay late. Uh, same thing with my moms. My mom's father, they ran. We, we, we originally were from Sarasota, Florida. We moved to Connecticut via the, uh, a guy by Mr. Tottle. He ran a restaurant in, in uh, Reading, Connecticut. And he also owned one in Sarasota. So he migrated my whole family up to move to Connecticut to run, the, run his restaurant. Father was a chef. Mother was a baker. Uncles were, uncles were cooks. So that's how we migrated to the east. I'm um, originally a Floridian uh, by birth, but coming up east uh, instilled hard work in me. Uh, I had great support in my high school. My my coaches were excellent. My teachers were excellent. You know, again, like you said earlier, that the first thing they said, there's no basketball without grades. And mm -hmm. I thought all I, all I wanted to do was play basketball. Like you said, basketball, basketball, that's all I thought I knew. But it came to haunt me as I got older. Because I got away from the I got away from the grade aspect and the NBA. And I slipped a little bit on grade. Uh you breaking up a little bit. I think you're breaking up. After my press after my stress from getting high in college, then I really um, I had to Wes. realize the realize the importance of it because basketball can be taken away from me immediately if Wes. you want to play the dumb dumb well. And uh Yes, I, you know, I was growing up to be a, a pretty good young man, so I wanted to just go ahead and uh, excuse me. I wanted to just go ahead and uh every right cake can again. My uh -oh. parents just on me about my girl. Huh? Yeah, um, we're having a little technical difficulties. We're gonna ask Wes if he would just uh log back in. Um let me see here. Hey, uh, yeah, we we having a little te technical difficulties. We was having a good time, man, and uh, I think we having some internet uh, problems here. And, babe, what do you think about that? Uh, what do you think about that whole start of the NBA between me and Wes? Well, uh, I, got, I remember Wes um, when he was uh, playing. I think even in in college. And he was really an intense ball player back then. And he's really intense as a person. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I know about Wes? Every time we go somewhere and do something, he is truly the life of the party. Oh, yeah, yeah, without you, a you doubt. Know, you, you, can't, you can't do, you can't out talk him. You can't out laugh him. Any of those things. He's a lot, <laughs> he's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, who was I just, I was just talking about somebody being the life of the party. Oh, Poppy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I was saying Poppy was the life of the party. And um, absolutely. And, 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 and Poppy used to come in and make it happen. And, and hey, that's what Wes is, man. When Wes walk in, you could have a smooth, casual thing going on. But when Wes come in, all of the energy just picks back up. Well, right? the attention shifts. <laughs> because he he brings so much energy and like and there's nothing better than that to have somebody no, no. who just really has fun there's a lot of people in this world that bring negativity and when they come around you they bring you down mm -hmm. wes is the 100 percent opposite of that <laughs> sherelle used to say oh here comes wes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you can hear him coming from a mile away yeah. Yeah, uh, and then when he comes too, that's the most important thing is is he bring love in the room. Yes, he does. Right, he brings a lot of love when he comes in. So uh, hopefully we can get him back. I don't think there's no no um, I don't think uh, there's no weather going on out there. I mean, even though the weather's a little crazy out there, you know, with the tropical storms and all those things. Oh, happening. is he out of the country? No, he's not out. I mean, I think he, uh, well, I assume he's in uh, Connecticut. In Connecticut, um, he was out. But he's definitely, I think, is back. So well, I, I, he's logging I, back on now. He said, 
So talking about you and Calvin Murphy back in the day, Calvin Murphy was also a lot of energy everywhere he went. Well, I, I mean, because remember, he, he twirled the baton. Yes. He was one of the best baton twirlers out there. Well, ever. He, he's considered the greatest uh, baton twirler ever. Yeah, yeah, we'd love to get him on one day <laughs> and have some batons thrown up in the air. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I, I mean, you know what? He played at the uh, University of Niagara, and he, he averaged over 30 points a game, and he was only about 5'9". You know, oh, yeah. and five nine, and then he averaged over probably over twenty points a game in the NBA throughout his career. He was one of those players that people just didn't want to guard. Well, I didn't have a was, choice <laughs> because he was so fast. Yeah, he was fast. It's like stepping on a bug and a shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was moving around like fast, oh, you know. Definitely. But uh, definitely. just great. Hopefully, we can get Wes back in here. Well, I, going back really quickly to one of the things that you brought up earlier on your music and movie of the week. Mm -hmm. The Woman King. Amazing. And there can't be a movie that Viola is in that she doesn't cry. <laughs> if she get me a tear in, she's going to win. Well, she's the best crier ever. Man, she I she make you want to start crying. She we, made me start crying in the movie. I'm like, Ooh. we We saw her in Fences in the play. Mm-hmm. It was the first time I went to a play and cried during the play. Like, who cries in a play? I was like, Denzel was in it. And yeah. I remember after the play, we all went to see um, Denzel afterwards. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, excuse me, I want to see that lady over there. <laughs> that was before she was like big time on TV or anything. Yeah, no, no. She was, she was, she was, uh, She's a mate, an amazing actress. Well, I'll say now you don't even have to call her actor or actress. We just actors. Yeah. Yeah, we just we just actors. And um no, no, she's she's just tremendous. But the, the Woman King was good. That's definitely one that's that's one that's going in the um man, that's one that's going in. I'm 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 definitely buying that. We're not renting that. We're gonna buy that. That's one one of those movies, man, that you just gotta have in your in your collection. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And there's probably a lot of people who won't see it because they will look at the title and not understand what it means. Oh yeah. No. They will say, Well, a woman can't be a king. Why should we watch this? But if you watch it, you'll understand the concept mm -hmm. of what happened. So it yeah. was impressive. Yeah. And the young girl who played her daughter, she blew me away. Oh, yeah, yeah. She was good. But I know you can't be telling people the story. They ain't going to see it yet. I didn't say anything you, about you it. You just said she had a daughter. Ooh. Yeah, I did say that. <laughs> <laughs> you just gave the storyline away. Oops. Oops. <laughs> can we edit this? <laughs> no, we can't edit it. We on live right now. Oh, you know. God. So, oh, what can we do? <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry, y'all. Don't watch this. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Oh, you know, you know, you know, you know, remind, you know, remind you of? What's that? It reminds you of when we grew up. And uh, I think it was Channel 2 or Channel 7 News with Channel 2. I think Channel 2 knew it had Warner Wolf. Remember Warner Wolf? Oh, yes. Right. And and, uh, you know, some of the basketball games and football games and stuff was on tape delay. Right. And and then he said, I won't tell you the score, you know, like he wouldn't say the score, but then he put a sign with the score up there. <laughs> <laughs> you just you just put a sign up for this for the for the score over there. You know, oh, that's, yeah. Yeah. That's what you Wes did. is trying to get back. Out. Oh, there he is. Hold on. You back, back man. up, man. Yeah, this is technology, bro. We didn't have this when we were coming up, bro. Hey, wifey, what's happening? Hey, baby. How you yeah, doing? We, I'm, I'm saying, we, like, don't, don't touch anything, you know. Yeah, man, I, I'm not touching absolutely nothing, man. But, you know, well, I like the old telegram, as they say. Pick up the phone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
But uh, back to my back to my story about you know my my about my parents and my loved ones and my family that supported me, man. They just they just been with me through thick and thin. And back to the story I was saying about education. I found out the hard way. I was ineligible in college. So I had to bounce back, get my grades together. And I, and I tell kids today, man, I'm a product of being a knucklehead and thinking, thinking I could just play basketball. This is, it's a little different than that. Now you got to have that education piece. And plus you didn't want to run around being called a dumb jock or a dumb right. athlete. You don't want to be a dumb athlete. So, uh, I got my act together, man. And, and life was pretty good ever since, man. But uh, but I, as I tell you, as you already know, man, uh, these kids now, the AAU circuit has got them so geeked like they really think they're better than what they are, and they forget the bottom line, and they forget the support system because all they're doing is chasing the money. I mean, money money's good, but I take my good health and happiness and make good friends any day. That's right. We When you were off, we were talking about, like, hey – you can go, we, we'd be at like these uh, corporate events, golf outings, dinners, you know, they, they kind of like dry, you know, they kind of dry, but we yes. know when, we know when Wes shows up, because when <laughs> Wes show up, the whole party's going to be alive. <laughs> hey you, man, you, you already know how that goes, Lowe's man, like, you know, 25 years ago, we weren't even on a basketball, I mean, on a, on a golf course. So now you get to rub elbows with the big wigs and the, and, the, and the movers and shakers and the corporate people. You know, they kept that away from us back in the day. We didn't know nothing about that. So now that's an element where we, we could be ourselves. I mean, it, it still keeps us competitive. It's a tough sport. But at the same time, the, the people that I met from hanging out with you and the Boys and Girls Club of Mount Vernon and your wife and, and man, it, those 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 friendships are priceless, man. I mean, you can't get those. We weren't getting those in basketball because we were too stuck in our ways. That's right. Yeah, yeah. No, you you're right about that. You know, and and uh, so so yeah, and and it's important. I mean, important to be able to figure out where. What is it that you need, right? What is it that you yeah. need to make connections? Yes. yes. What is, what, you know, what venue do I need to be in and what do I have to learn in order to be a part of the network, right? Well, because, you, know, you, know, you know, the key to that, the key to that, Lowe's, is you got to be, you got to be um, intelligent. You got to be able to talk. You got to be able to, you know, to move and shake like they are. You know, I mean, plus, believe it or not, they're more in awe of us and want to be around us and talk about what we're doing more than what we're trying to figure <laughs> out what they're doing. They don't never walk up to you and say, hey, my name is John Jones, the CEO of, of Microsoft. You know, <laughs> you got to find that out later on. Or you playing with Jeff Bezos' little brother or something, you never know because they're real quiet and humble. When right. they play the sport, but like you said, just to get in those arenas, and 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 again, I thank you and your wife and the Boys and Girls Club of Mount Vernon, man, for allowing me to be a part of your family, because you know we've always been competitive, man. We never sat down and really broke bread until that's for the last 10, 15 years. That's right. Yeah, so yeah. so you know for for the young ones, you got to be able to you got to be intelligent. You got to be able to hold a conversation. You gotta, you gotta have a sense of purpose, and you know, like yourself and me, we're likable people, and we're That's energized. Right. I mean, we're <laughs> energized, so they they want to talk to us. They want to know what we're doing. They want to, they want to, they want to get involved with us. And if we know that our so called hyperness would have got us over twenty years ago to get us in a room with some of them people, <laughs> you know, we would have been sitting pretty. You yeah. know, what I'm well, well, that's why I think it's important, right? And and we get. You know, because we're no longer playing, right? Uh, yeah. A lot of times, people, and particularly young people, right? They all because we can't play anymore. They don't see any any value, right? But what we have experienced and the knowledge that we have gained, right, can be very valuable. I mean, what you were just saying is so is so valuable that they could talk to you or talk to talk to me, you know, about how to navigate through business and build relationships and network. Cause we didn't get that. You know, it wasn't somebody saying, Hey, you should learn how to speak to people this way. Or yes. you be careful. Cause we, we thought we were the room, 
right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yes, we, we were. you know, we went to college and we 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 everybody were looking at us and saying exactly. you're great, oh you're a great basketball player and all these kind of things. We we didn't we didn't think that you know one day that guy you're sitting next to or the guy who's cheering for you or the young lady who's clapping their hands for you is going to be a CEO someplace. Right. Exactly. And, 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 uh, or they're going to be a doctor one day, or they're going to be a lawyer one day. Right. Exactly. And, and then yeah. they're going to be important too. Exactly. Right? And, and, and so we, we have to be flexible enough, right. To say, I'm going to be, I'm valuable, but other people are valuable too. And we need to continue to make those networks. Exactly. You know, because we're going to need each other in the future. In the future. To piggyback on what you just said, man, we got to get out our own way sometimes and let somebody else and let God guide us, bro. Sometimes we can, we think it's me, 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 I, 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 and we can do it all by ourselves. That is an that is a wrong, a worst statement and the worst, worst thing you can follow is you think it's all you're doing it all by yourself. You're going to need help along the way. In fact, you're not here without the grace of God and without the, without the birth of your mother and your father and you're getting together, first and foremost. Now, <laughs> second of all, we got to get out of our own way and says, okay, yeah, they might be old, or may they, but, but they got to remember, we opened the door for them. I mean, these kids these kids are not where they are today unless, unless somebody laid the groundwork. Just like Fraser and, and Monroe and all the and all and all these people and Chamberlain and all of them opened the door for us. We opened the door for them. And these mm -hmm. kids, these young kids now should realize that the more information and the more tools you get, the better and a lot easier it will be. Again, as you said, we didn't have these tools. We didn't have personal trainers. We didn't have cryo, cryo medicines to get us healthy after a day. We didn't have extra shoes that we could wear every other every day. We could put on something different. Or if we if we sprang our ankle, we'll be back next month, and you still got your job. That was yeah, not right. that did not happen. You lose your seat, you move your feet, you lose your seat. That's the old <laughs> model, buddy. <laughs> so these kids, these kids, I would like for them to be a little bit more humble and understand that we're here to help them. Yeah, you can Google us and see what we've done. But as people, we're grown men now. We're people now. We're grown men now. Yes, that was our job. And if you ever make it to that level, that is your job, too. But mm. the greater job that you have is to give back and to pass it on to the next person. You can't keep it to yourself. You have mm. to give that back. And that's, as we got older, I found out to be more valuable than anything. I'll give my shirt to a person that needs it because they need it more than I do. But I'm not going to be like, damn, that dude right there, he, he messed up. I'm not going to throw him under the bus. Mm. I'm going to help him. Where, right. where now we need more of that and we need these kids to be more educated because, again, like we said, we didn't have the tutors, we didn't have the, 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 the computer access, we didn't have all these things that these kids have at, the, at their beck and call to be the best they can be. Whether mm -hmm. it's basketball, singing, dance, opera, doctor, lawyer, there's, it's times millions and billions now. We couldn't even <laughs> count for a billion. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, yeah. a good 50,000 or 100,000 was our billion. Now <laughs> you're talking billions. That's right. Yeah, so why definitely. not educate yourself to be the best you can be, whether it's doctors, lawyers, dancers, and again, even for the even for the young ladies out there, man. The sky's the limit. Don't let nobody take that away from you. Tell you you can't be. You can be anything you want. It sounds cliche, but it's a fact. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think I'm gonna start another uh, curiosity before we talk about your basketball career right um recently uh i'm gonna throw this in there you guys man you know, isn't magic great man oh man he's the best man he, he magic's the best he's so the best bro i think i got a couple of pictures of you guys having a reunion i think it was just what last week they i mean Ma magic flew all your guys out to hawaii Yo, 
We flew us to Cali. We left Cali, went to Hawaii. We reenacted a basketball practice. We were in Maui for six days, all exclusive pay. The, I call it getting the band back together. And if you can see some of the pictures, man, I was all over Cap, man, because I needed that. I needed, I needed some of that Kareem love, man, because he's a GOAT. If you hang around the GOAT, you got to be with the GOAT, and man. And it was just. Words can't even describe it, man. There was the greatest week Magic put on a party. And let me give you the top, the icing on the cake that people might not know. We had a dinner, we had a supper, a dinner supper concert that was held by Jeffrey Osborne. Jeffrey Osborne played an all-out concert at <laughs> dinner, a live concert at dinner. <laughs> Overlooking the white eye, man, it was crazy, Los. It was absolutely insane. I have nothing but love for Magic and my boy Pat Riley. He's a yeah. better dude. He's a better dude now than he was a coach. He was a great coach, but him and Magic put this together. We've been trying to do this for like four, four or five years before COVID hit, and so we had to we had to sit it back. It, but man, it was, dude. I'm out playing golf with James Worthy. Me, me, James Worthy, Byron, Byron Scott, and Eddie Jordan, we had a match every other day. We were playing <laughs> a golf. You know, we go back three course meals every single day. Uh, man, it was it was it, it was tremendous, man. It was like we like we never left each other. It was long overdue. But like mm. I said, man, I, I I was in the cap's ear, man. I had to get I had to get my Kareem love, man. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> Everybody ain't running with the cap and magic all week. <laughs> no, no, no. And and uh yeah, man, you guys is out there running plays. Hey, you know, you're out there running your old plays and stuff like yo, that. <laughs> yo, it was it was hilarious, man. Pat Riley literally put on his Pat Riley outfit, his usual outfit with his three pleat, three pleat khakis. He got his shirt on it, he got his blue pad that he always keeps all his papers in and he keeps his plays down. And we actually were out there running plays, man. It was hilarious, bro. Yeah. Cap, still, Cap still shooting the sky hook. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> only, only, only thing I gotta tell you though, we did do, we did not do no running. That was all half court set. <laughs> yeah, but it, I know, but, but I know that. It, it almost, it almost got competitive because I put up like five hundred dollars that Spencer Haywood could still dunk, and I couldn't get no better. And uh, but Spencer actually went up there and dunked it. <laughs> oh, 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 Yo, okay, Yo, okay. It, but it was nope. it was great, man. I mean, that's man. If you should get that guy on your podcast, man, Spencer Haywood is a classic, bro. He's oh, yeah. a classic. He's yeah, a I classic. Bet. You remember? Remember, Spencer was the one that caused us to go hardship. You remember he yeah. he fought the NBA. Mm -hmm. He fought the NBA for players like us to go hardship and to go early and for some of the dudes to go out of high school. People don't realize that. No, Spencer. First of all, he's a legend. He's a legend. Yeah, uh, he's a legend. And um, I met him at the uh, the last uh, All Star game in New York. Yeah. Um, he was at an early morning breakfast, and uh, you know we hung out together. And yeah, him and uh, Kevin Johnson. Uh, yeah. All, them, all them guys was there, and yeah, that that, that was an awesome time, man. But no. you had my man Clay Johnson there, man. Clay, Clay, Clay and I. <laughs> Clay and I was in. Uh, 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 Montana, we was at Billings. the the Billings, Montana. Wow, the, the volcanoes, and he got picked up. We we were leading the league. I think we almost we was almost undefeated. I was the point guard. We had a uh, Clay Johnson, Marlon Redman. Yep, yeah. Clay, Clay Johnson, Marlon Redman, Sam Clancy. We were yep. all on one um, one CBA team. You know. Wow. He, yeah, he got picked up by. He was fortunate, man. He got picked up by the Lakers and won the NBA championship. He won, right? Yeah, yeah. He's, and, a, he's a good dude too, man. Clay, yeah. I, 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 I gotta tell him I talk to you, man, and I and I reach out to him and tell him to reach out to you too. But Clay, Clay was Clay was a humble dude, man. He's still in Kansas City. He's still living in Kansas City with the wife. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. Yeah. I mean, we were down there a few years ago, and my son Isaiah was looking at the school. Uh huh. You know, Isaiah was looking at. The University of Missouri, and okay, and, and Clay came over because he played at Missouri. Yep, right? yep, he, yeah, yeah. He came over uh, to the school. He's like a legend there. Yeah, I think know. he. I think he's coaching one of his. I think he's coaching at the college over there. He's still oh, he's nice. coaching. 
Yeah, he's coaching at. Uh, well, I think he went to a JC there or whatever he did over there. He's coaching at. He's coaching at a college in Kansas City. So uh, you know, when we break bread later, I, I'll send you his number and all that stuff. So yeah, but yeah. he's doing good though. It, it was it was a great reunion, man. It was the best reunion. I think we all needed it. Uh, it was a thirty years since we've been together as a unit, so it was outstanding. Yeah, no, no, it was good. And you know, me and Eddie Jordan, uh, we we. My rookie year, because we, my rookie year, we, we competed against each other for spots, and they ended up trading him to the Lakers, and they kept me my rookie year. Um, so, uh, you know, he he got he got the best of the deal because he we went to the Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, no, 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 that was a, that was a good deal either way. You got yeah, a job, yeah. and he, he got a better end of the job. He went yeah, over he there, did, he did. But, <laughs> But Eddie's a good dude, man. We play golf every day. You know, he moved down to Charlotte. You know, he's just he's just retired now, just taking it easy. You know, he did a lot of coaching with the Hornets for so mm -hmm. you know it's uh it was a great reunion to get with everybody, man. Rambis was there, AC came out, Billy Thompson, Michael Thompson. I mean, we just we just had we just had a, a all out week, man, where we just sat down and we just broke bread, man, and just said, Hey, if we're gonna be family, let's 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 keep this thing rolling. That's roll. Well, you know what's crazy, man, was that we got the chance to like uh you got the chance to play with uh Michael Thompson. Yeah. Know? And uh, you know Michael Thompson, that's Clay Thompson's father. Exactly. Yeah, Clay Thompson's father that played with Ray Williams at the University of Minnesota and Kevin McHale was all on the same team back then. And and here I played against uh Michael Thompson, Clay Thompson's dad, right? I mean, this it's crazy, man, to see their sons grow up. No, it's the same, man. Not only, not only Mike, not only, not only does his oldest son, Mike, Michael Jr. and little, and my son Wes was was the same age in the locker rooms together. Byron's son and little Wes was in the locker room together. Clay wasn't born yet. Trey was just being born. Who who plays for the Dodgers? Who's at Michael's mm -hmm. son? Who's having a great year? So it's I mean to see our offsprings right now, man, and you know just to be able to, to spend time with your kids now is more valuable to us than anything, man. As well as you spending time with your kids, man. But it's it's a small world, a small fraternity in which we were a part of, those. Yeah, definitely, and. You know, yeah, it, it, you know, people don't know how uh, how special that is to be to to make it to the league, to play on a team for how even if you play one game, right? Just yeah. just just to get drafted, and you know, we got drafted the same year. We yeah. came out we came out the same year. Let me tell you this quick story. I think I mentioned it to you. Uh, was that uh, you know? My brother and them went out to uh, Connecticut. My my boys and girls club coach uh, took a team to Connecticut to play in the summer league, summer league tournament. So you know, I'm I'm I come out there, right? And and everybody's talking about when we got out there, we brought the whole family and everybody. You know, my friend and brother, everybody with them when they come. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so so we 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 in the in the park, and the, everybody's talking about yo yo man. I'm gonna go get where Wes at, man. We're gonna go get Wes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was just sitting back, you know, nonchalant, like that. What, what you gonna go get Wes for, man? Wes, you tear all y'all guys up, man. Oh, we got <laughs> my guys talking about, like, hey, Lowe's Moore's here, man. Go get Wes. <laughs> like, come no, on, man. man. Yo, That's man, crazy. We, we used to battle, though, but I'm gonna tell you, man, I used to love to come to Greenberg, man. Oh, man, yeah. Please. Greenberg was off the chart, man. That was better than the Rucker at one time. We was getting it in over there. But speaking of another note, man, how is your lovely mother, bro? My mom is doing well. Yeah, yeah, Tell her, yeah. I, said, hey. Tell yeah. her I said, hey, man, does she need to come to Connecticut a little more often? <laughs> <laughs> you know what happened, yeah, because she loved, you know, she loved the UConn team. So she we, loved, you know, we, she we got to get, get, get to the game, get, get into another game this year. And, uh, the other day, right? I promised her. I was like, um, "We're gonna go to, we're gonna go to lunch on Wednesday, right?" And so I was like, "Yeah, we're going to lunch on uh, no." I said, "We're going to lunch on Friday, right?" Was it? I think it was Friday. Yeah, Friday. She. I said, "We're going. I'm gonna take you. I'm gonna come. I'm, I'm gonna get you for lunch on Friday." 
And then, you know, my son-in-law, she, she said, hello, Wes, I'm here. <laughs> That's what my mom said. She said right there. <laughs> yeah, I see it. Hey, mama. <laughs> so, so somehow I forgot. You know, I forgot that I was supposed to take her to lunch. You know, I, I was gonna come over and bring her lunch. And, Bad move. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, so <laughs> so she FaceTimed me, man. You know, like <laughs> hey, she's like, uh, what happened? I was like, What happened? You know, it's like you supposed to bring lunch. And I was like, Oh, oh man, you know, I, you know, you started like I gotta do this and you know, I gotta do that, you know. And she's like, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> they said, right. you know she you know she you know she didn't sound upset but then you know i talked to isaiah he was like uh yeah, yeah and she didn't sound upset but she said he didn't bring me lunch you know I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's you, her upset that's about as upset your mother gonna get though she's so yeah, cool yeah, 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 yeah. but <laughs> yeah you but I, look like okay Lowe's. I, but i'm a good son yeah, no, you were great. So I'm a good son. So I ran you, out. You so missed I, that lunch date. <laughs> yeah, I ran out and and got her, her 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 favorite. You know, her went to the soul food place, got the fried fish and the shrimp. You know, and 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 dropped it out. She was talking about putting a turkey burger on us. Let it go slow. Let me. <laughs> 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 yeah, she gave me a guilt trip, you know. That yeah, I'm gonna oh, take this turkey burger and let it just go slow. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have my mother. Oh, well, I guess I just had to eat me some bread and coffee since nobody <laughs> wants to eat me. And you, know, you know, she told me, she said, Yeah, I was cutting up a mango. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, they, they put that guilt trip on you, the heartbeat. Boy. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to, I had to make up. You know, I didn't end up yeah. making up, <laughs> but um, yeah, man. And we got drafted the same year. Yeah, right. Um, I got drafted by the Nets, and you got drafted by the Bullets at the time, right? Washington, That's right. Washington Bullets, Washington Bullets. I, mean, I think we even got a picture of of, of that man. Um, yeah, man. That, those were that. Was, believe it or not, those that, that was a great opportunity for me. I only was I was only there for what forty games before they traded me to Atlanta. Yeah, but, but, but it was a great day. I mean, I, where you find that picture at? Play, I need that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who doing the research over there? That's your wife with all that research over there. Well, I'm, I'm I'm the research guy, you know. Okay, well, yeah. well, you're doing a great job, though. No, but that was <laughs> that, that was a great moment for me, man. I was able to get my family, get my moms out, you know, not to stop working because mothers ain't gonna never stop doing what they were doing. And plus, ninety thousand wasn't gonna take care of nineteen family members. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're like today, nineteen million, and everybody can quit work. You know what I mean? <laughs> You know, oh, yeah, because the, the average salary back then was forty thousand dollars a year. Or forty-five thousand. Yeah, and man. We thought we was rich. Man, I <laughs> yeah, I did tell you, I, I played like I was rich. That that forty-five thousand was forty-five thousand more than I had. That's, That's what right. Said. Yeah. But, but uh, but it you know it allowed me to do some things for the family, man, and, and start building an empire and and just just grow. Cause remember. We all, we never signed four, three, four, five year deals back then. It was a one year deal, one year, one year, one year, one year, one year. Yeah. Where I got a running joke with my mother. She should have had me. She should have hatched me and put me in the backyard for about twenty years. And now I'm right now. <laughs> right now, right now, of the fourteen player pick in the first round, that's guaranteed sixteen million dollars a year. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you came but, up but the wrong time. Yeah, I wouldn't trade it for the world, old man, because it made me the person I am. It made me humble. Yeah, I had one of the best jobs in the world when playing basketball. But the friendships that like having with you and Gus and Ray, before God rest his soul, and Kareem and Magic and Worthy and the, and the people that I come across, man, that's that's priceless to me, bro. It's worth yeah. my memories is more valuable than any of the money that they could have paid me. Yeah, that's that's true, man. I mean, you know, uh, hanging out with Magic at his parties. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> that's for another show. But yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, yes. yeah, no, no, you, those memories are amazing. Meeting people, and then I, I remember, I remember this in my rookie year. So I'm with the Nets, and Maurice Lucas is there, right? So um, we're on a fast break, and. 
you know, Lucas had just thrown it out. I stole the ball and I'm coming down and I take off, you know, I take off. Like I'm getting ready. I'm like, I'm, I'm about to dunk on Luke. <laughs> You're like, I'm great. Duck. You know what he do to me? Taking me and snatching me out there. He said, nah, man, you ain't getting no reputation on me. Right. Yeah. That, 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 so that was Lucas. Lucas. Yeah. So then we play against you guys and you dunk on Luke. Right. <laughs> and then, then Kevin Lockery called time out. Right. I said, yo, look, look what happened, man? How you let West dunk on you, but you gonna snatch me out the air, right? I'm your teammate. <laughs> Yo, I remember that like it was yesterday. And then the next time I went to paint, he tried to take my head off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he know he's gonna get you back, man. You no, know, he said he said, oh, you got me. All right, all right, little fella, you got me. I said, I said, damn right, I got you, and I'm gonna get you again. He said, yeah, okay. I was trying to get back down there, man. I was getting off the floor. He said, how that feel? I said, man, that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, it, you, you had to be challenging, man. Then you go over to the Atlanta Hawks. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. I don't know why they let you go. But D.C. is just as bad as Atlanta, man. No, you no, know. DC was. I mean, they were two. They were two tough towns, bro. Believe me. But, but that UB Brown kind of let me go. You know, I had Eddie, I had Drew, I had Dominique as his rookie year. We had a nice little squad, but that that Central Division was tough, man. We couldn't get mm -hmm. by Milwaukee, and Chicago, but that was they let me ball over there in Atlanta. But the town was a tough town, and then they, you know, then I get over to, to Jordan. I knew I wasn't gonna get too many shots over there. In Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wouldn't get the ball at all over there. So, <laughs> so I just had to play my role. Like he want the ball, give him the ball. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you know, oh, but, 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 but I but I can say honestly, man, I, I had some of the I played with some of the maybe the top fifteen of the greatest basketball players of all time. Like I said, I started with Jordan. I, I started back over with Jordan. Played with Magic and Kareem, Worthy, Scott. Ice, George Gervin, San Antonio, Dominique in Atlanta. I mean, I seen them all, man. I seen them all, and 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 they were all great, great individuals, man. Again, everybody talks a little harsh about Mike being a, a hard head, but Mike was a perfectionist, man. Mike, all Mike wanted to do was win, and he needed to he needed to prove he was up there with the Magics and the Isaiahs and the Birds. So yeah. he he was destined. He was destined to be good. But uh, yeah. he shot the ball a lot, a lot. But the, but what people don't <laughs> what people don't realize, Mike played hell of a D though. Mike was a great defensive player. Oh yeah, without a doubt. I, I tell I you know, you know we we always you know we both talent. We were both talented back in the day. I mean, for little yeah, guys, sure. we you know we had it. You know, quickness, speed, jumping ability. You yeah. know all that stuff, man. Uh, we were little, but we played like we were about six five, six six. Yeah, you know? exactly. And uh, the crazy thing was. Jordan's rookie year, right? Um, we played in the exhibition game, and I was sitting on the bench. And um, Coach McKinney, you know, was a was a coach. Uh, used to be the coach of the Lakers. Yeah, uh, yep. yeah, yeah. So, and Michael was just giving Reggie, man, he was giving Reggie Theus like <laughs> I was like, oh man, everybody sitting on the bench like, Whoa, oh. <laughs> And, first quarter, and I heard my coach McKinney said, hey, Lo, go out there and get Reggie. I'm like, nah, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, well you, you know, you know, Mike had this running thing against Reggie because, you know, he, Reggie was Mr. Chicago. Mm. When, when, he, when, he was a, when he was a bull, so he had yeah. this running thing against against Reggie. So Reggie, you know, pretty boy Reggie, everybody loved Reggie, handsome <laughs> Reggie, and you know, and he played a little good. You know, play Reggie was a good player, steady, but when Mike said, "Man, Reggie, who?" and the first <laughs> and we and we had the exhibition game, he said, "Man, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you the real Reggie Theus." <laughs> he said he came in. He came to the locker room. He came to me. He said, "Give it to me for the first six possessions." I said, "All right, no problem." Mm. Reggie switched out on him. He went at Reggie every single time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whenever he saw Reggie on a switch, he's like, "Man, this dude can't guard me." He says, "Just get out the way," because back then you know you, you you didn't have the illegal zone, and you had to get out the way. So it's mano y mano. Man, he <laughs> tore he tore Reggie up. Boy, I was oh, like, yeah, yeah. 
I said, Mike, you pissed off? He said, man, I just wanted the people to know. Reggie Theus ain't here no more. <laughs> all righty, then. I'm you out there already, then, young fella. Yeah. Let's go. And, and Reggie and I were roommates. Right? Yeah, man. So after, so after McKinney said, go get – so I found I went in the game. I go in the game. But I was thinking when I was sitting on the bench, man, how gifted I was. Right? Oh, no, you were gifted, no question. And, and then I looked at Mike, and I was like, somebody took – my gifting and magnified it <laughs> like a hundred million times, right? A hundred million, <laughs> like, a hundred million yeah, times is about seven feet, about seven inches taller. About that's seven. what I'm saying. I'm like, man, he's quick as I am. He jumped higher than me. He's Yo. faster than me. I mean, Yo. I'm like <laughs> fundamentally sound. I'm like, what is going on? Yeah, Coach he, is he, like going there and guard him. I'm like, man, look. Soon as he put his tongue out, I fouled him. I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> no, he was a, no, Lowe's, Lowe's, he was a problem. And then let me tell you something, Lowe's. Not only was he a problem in the game, he was even worse in practice. He would tear you up in practice. If you gave, if he show, if you show any sign that you didn't want, oh, he's gonna tear you up. He's gonna embarrass you for the whole practice, and then he's just gonna leave. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's crazy. I, I, um. I came in the locker room, man. Uh, they was playing against the Nets, right? And I was doing chapel. I was a chaplain for the Nets at one time. And so I was in the lock. I came in the locker room and say, hey, hey, the field. And then, what's up, Phil? You know, talking to Phil. And then Mike comes in, right? He's like, hey, Mike, you know Lowe's? Yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know Lowe's. You know, Lowe's, and at the time, Rodney McCray was on, was on the team. He was with the Bulls, yep. Yeah, he was on the Bulls. So he said, yep. yo, Lowe's and Rodney went to high school together. He looked at Phil, looked at me, said, man, that dude is terrible, man. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I don't even know why Phil never brought him here. You know, like that, that was crazy, right? <laughs> I'm like, man, how you talking about my man like that? You know, so, so I just let it, I just like, man, he just came out and just blurted it out. No, no, he's something that happened, Rodney had came from Sacramento and he had uh, a surgery done. And what yeah. they, they did this. They, they made a mistake in the surgery and connected something, and he couldn't lift his arms. So he was playing in pain every single day. And then midseason, they had to go in and correct it. And then Rodney, after rehabilitation, became Rodney, right? Oh, no, he, he saved him a couple times. Oh, yeah. And then he came – so he came back to – when Mike came back to New York, he came back to New York, and I was in the locker room with him. He said, I mean, I just want to apologize about Rodney, man. <laughs> <laughs> He got skills, you know, but he said, but I thought, I don't know why, man, you know, but he just thought like, yo, they, why they bring this guy here, man? He ain't yeah. doing nothing. And he would just tell you straight up just how it was. No, Mike, Mike, Mike didn't, Mike didn't buy this tongue. Plus, Rodney was coming off. He had just got a lot, a, a nice contract too. So that, that probably pissed Mike off. Like, <laughs> you him over here? He making more money than me. <laughs> she said, Rod, Rodney had a. What was that? That's just, I, said, but he had a hernia. Yeah, he did. Oh, okay, yeah, he did have a hernia, and he had he had the surgery, and whatever they did, they made a mistake in that surgery, and and uh, and he was he couldn't like he couldn't even move his hand. But after after he, they did a corrective surgery, and he stopped balling. You go to Rodney six seven handle. Oh, Rodney was a problem. Yeah, Rodney yeah. was a problem. But you got to remember too, Lowe's back then, them doctors was butchers. They didn't know what the hell they were doing, man. <laughs> Man, you best around go to a doctor and talk about cutting. You were done for the year, bro. You, oh, they, yeah, you was there was out. No, there was no six week recovery of you tore your ankle up or you you got to get ACL surgery. That was a that was a death threat. Yeah, I was man. like, that's next year. See you later, pal. And no and telling what that doctor he might have cut on the wrong leg. That back then he, was, <laughs> he couldn't trust them doctors back then. They they had no clue compared to these doctors now that are going there and fixing you back in six weeks. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about, uh, you know, going through that process. And then finally, how many years were you with the Lakers? Well, you know, I did I did six years in the league well, up and down with Chicago, Atlanta, Philly, Chicago, San Antonio. And then it wasn't and, and the story of how I got to the Lakers and Magic can never tell you Magic is a funny dude. <laughs> uh, we, we were playing San Antonio played the Lakers in the, in the first round best of five I'm averaging like 30 and I'm mm. killing I'm killing the Lakers so I'm like if I knock these dudes off I got a shot so this is my <laughs> only shot knock these dudes off So, but I'm averaging 30 so I go I take Magic to the hole 
He gets fouled. They pull him out. We're down by about seven. Game almost over. I hit a jumper in the corner, fall, get fouled. So Magic said, yo, Wes, man, good game. I said, thank you, bro. He said, you know that was the game plan, right? <laughs> I said, what the hell? Our game plan, the game plan was to let you go crazy, let everybody else don't do nothing. I said, oh, you the dirty dude, man. You the dirty dude. I said, I'll tell you what, I appreciate it because that got me a contract, and I was on my way to L.A. the next week because I was playing for a contract. But <laughs> – but I ended up I ended up going out there playing with them for two years, man, and, and it was the best two years because I finally landed with an organization with a team that had a mission. And from day one when I got there, man, you know, you always played against the Lakers. You hated to play them because you know they were going to win and they were good and they got to L.A. all day and the sunshine every day. I like, But when I finally got there, man, it was a humble experience, man. I had I had to get over my my celebrity status for, with of running around Kareem like a little five year old because I'm finally <laughs> playing with Kareem and and I'm checking I'm, I'm seeing Worthy every day and I'm so I had to get over that and say oh shit I belong here and so <laughs> and so once I realized I belong there and they they chose me to be there man it was like it was I knew it was destined man and, and again we went we were. We, we were just balling, man. That was by far one of the, if not the greatest team of all time. Uh, that's 87-88 team where we won it back-to-back. -back. Nobody had done it in 20-plus years since the Celtics. So that was our motto was to do it again. That first one was just amazing uh, when we knocked off Boston. And it wasn't until... Ten years after I got out of the league, I was—I realized I was in one of the greatest basketball series of all time, the Lakers Celtics series. Mm. You know, what I mean? like, yeah, without like, a doubt. So I'm like a Lakers Celtics series. I—I I, I mean, I've literally got gray hair and, and everything, and realized, oh, I played <laughs> the Lakers series. And I, but but when you were going, when you were there, you didn't realize it, but you just had a—you had a mission. And uh, basketball became fun to me when I got to LA, and it, and it became. My life cycle because that my son was born that same year in '87, uh, and and it just took off from there, man. And then, like I said, from there on, I, I retired in '89 and went overseas for a couple of years after that just to keep the to keep the money coming in. But other than that, man, I, I I had lived the dream. And plus, you know, eight years, nine years of basketball back then was was tough on the body. Because remember, mm -hmm. we were flying commercial. We had to be up at five o'clock. You know, back to practice at seven. I mean, it was it was just my body had to, was kind of like breaking down. So I wanted to take a year or two off, but I ended up going overseas just just keep it going. But uh, L.A. was L.A. was the the most most important part of my life in basketball and to be a part of a championship to seal everything that from all the rookie games for all the city college games from all the greensburg games now i'm a champion and that's what that was icing on the cake for me yeah so um you know between high school i think your high school i got a little a little article there that you were using high school up in connecticut Yes, sir. Yeah, and uh, from high school over into Wisconsin. And, well, you know, uh, believe it or not, Lowe's, uh my high school was very similar. My high school, Warren Harden High School in Bridgeport, was very similar to, to Mount Vernon High. You know, um, Bridgeport is about the size of Mount Vernon, and, and, and you all have put out quite a few pros as well as Bridgeport has with myself, John Bagley, Chris Smith, Charles Smith. I don't want to say that name too loud because New York is <laughs> so I got to whisper that name. Charles is a nice guy, man. You know that. No, you know no that. Charles is a great dude. And a great that. player. No, so he's a, he's a, he's a, huh? I saw Charles play in high school. Yeah, Tree said yeah, she's no, so Charles, Charles is a great dude, man. So you know, we have we have similar backgrounds in life and 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 and, and, and our aspirations to be pros by you know you being only like maybe 25, 30 miles down the road. But Bridgeport was very similar to Mount Vernon. Uh education wise, uh as far as environment wise, as far as growing up wise, you know, the, mm -hmm. you know, we had a lot of obstacles. We had a lot of friends that are here, a lot of friends that are in jail, a lot of friends that die. Mm -hmm. But you know, but it made us stronger, and you know, it, it kept us on the right on a righteous path. I mean, it could have been us, it could have been me, but basketball was my out, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, 
that and I thank the Boys and Girls Club for that because I didn't have to be in the streets. I was in the Boys and Girls Club every single right day. Yeah, yeah. And um, you, from Wisconsin, gets drafted into the pros. And um, and then you were talking about your son, and he, he's doing some – some uh some major things uh you know right now uh, yeah did you, when he was little did you think what did you think no believe it or not i i knew i thought he would i didn't know if he was going to stay with it but uh believe it or not true story he wanted to go to practice with me he was, two, he was a year and a half two years old and he always wanted to go play he always every morning he woke up he grabbed his little ball started dribbling and I had a little boy, I had a little basket for him. So every morning he would get up and play basketball. And then when I go out to practice, he would be crying because he wanted to go with me. So <laughs> he, he had it in his jeans and uh, believe it or not a uh, true story. Uh, we played in, I, I got, I got picked up by LA on October 13th. We practiced in 13th and we played in San Antonio on the 15th. He was born on the 14th. He wasn't even 24 hours old when his mother brought him to the airport to meet us. So he has a picture. He's not even 24 years old when Kareem is holding him, Kareem anointing him, Magic anointed him, <laughs> um, Pat Riley anointed him. So he 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 grew right in and he was born right into that era, man. And then once he picked it up, bro, it, it, I, I had no problem with him doing following the dream. He really didn't want to go to Wisconsin due to the fact that he knew I was there. And his mother was a really good basketball player and a, and, a, and, a, and a track star, so he didn't want that pressure. He, so we let him have his own life and let him do it his way. But it's, it's a really a phenomenal treat to watch him go undrafted. And here he is in year 13, mm -hmm. year 13 or year 14, yeah. and, and, and carving out a niche for himself. But he's he's a gym rat, man. He's a gym rat. I'm proud of him, but I'm, and everybody in the family's proud of him, man. And and I saw it day one. I said, you if you're anointed by the basketball guys, bro, you need to play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's 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 all good, man. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Now, you know, hey, you dropped a lot of a lot of nuggets tonight, man. Um, you know, hope that there's a parent out there or some kids out there or somebody will see this later, man, and, and hear this uh, nuggets and and dimes and wisdom that you were dropping tonight. man. And, and I appreciate it, brother. But let me tell you, man, I, I couldn't <laughs> do it without you and your wife for bringing me on, man. And I wish you nothing but success in all your endeavors. And, you know, I support you and your wife and family, whatever, bro. You know, I'm only 40 minutes away. So yes, whatever sir. we want to do, we get on the golf course, we can chop it up, whatever we need each other. In fact, believe it or not, to, to throw another nugget out at you, but you're not in the business no more. Remember Brad Hollins that played at UCLA? I do, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you know Brad Hollins was the president of the Boys and Girls Clubs nationally around the world? Oh, yeah? Yeah, I just found that out in Hawaii. Oh, I, yeah. I just, is, he, I just, is he a new, new – is he the new president? No, he's been there. He he just retired as a president of Nas uh, for the national. Oh, okay. he's been there like 10, 15 years. He's been there for a long time. So we had a conversation, man. And I and, and I thought about you. I said, man, damn, Lowe's un Lowe's are retired now. He out there playing golf every day. So he ain't got no time. He ain't got time for the boys and girls club like he used to. So I gotta still give. I got still gotta pass the nugget on, but. Well, you know, yeah. we, just, we just gotta keep we gotta keep the faith, man, and stay family, man, and and make sure everybody's eating, man, and do what we do, and that God's given us the ability to pass on these messages, man, because we can't take it with us, and it's on, and our youth need it more so now than anything. Yeah, yeah, and I, I love speaking at the boys at the boy, different boys and girls clubs and stuff like that in schools, and um, are you still doing some coaching and training and stuff? Yeah, I'm still doing my personal training stuff. Uh, I slowed down a little bit during the COVID, but I still got a couple people that I still do back and forth. But uh, I just got, like I said, I just got back from Hawaii. I was over with my son prior, getting him ready for training camp, and then I went over to Hawaii. So I'm basically I'm staying close to him, man, and getting him ready, keeping his mind sharp because, you know, that one year he went to L.A., he was kind of down because he went in there thinking he was going to play a lot and start. And he had been a starter his whole career. Now all of a sudden he's coming off the bench. That was that was a tough year for him. So now 
you know, we just went and did some mind work and some and some gym work. But uh, I'm I'm available for all anybody that needs work, anybody that wants mentoring. But my door, my phone is open. Uh, I, I I just like what I like the space I'm in right now as far as the, the person that I've grown to be because I was an introvert and I thought I could do it all by myself and I didn't need nobody until I got friends like you and started playing golf and and just started realizing what was my purpose in life. And it was to coach and get back. Who who would just say me? <laughs> me, West <laughs> Valley. We're going to be coaching girls, female girls basketball. But it, was a, <laughs> but it was the greatest time in my entire life. I would do it every day. So, wifey, if you're listening, after this final, if after this final four, we had this conversation. I can oh. use some. I can use some work now. <laughs> you hear trees? Uh, you know, I bring, I bring, I bring that link. I'm just trying to fall. You said I can use work over there. I can use the work over there now. <laughs> but I, I, I bring that Laker system, and I, if we don't win it this year, I'll give you that Laker system as a guaranteed winner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are, are you still the? I think you was at the Greenwich. Greenwich, I was at Greenwich Academy. I was at I was at a private school at Greenwich Greenwich Academy girls. I took uh I took a 0 and 21 team, took them to two two city two cities uh finals, three quarter finals and and one state in the in the seven years I was there. But you know, I, I changed the I changed the mindset and, and and I let them be, you know. I gave again. I gave him the Lakers system, which is a winning system, and trust the system, <laughs> and trust trust what we trust what we're doing, and we'll be all right. Uh, I got my I, NBA stuff on, you know. Yeah, you see, I got my Laker gear on. You see me? I I, I, I go nowhere without it. But um, I ended up putting uh, like four girls in college. Uh, one of my one of my best girls is at uh, Columbia right now by the name of Caitlin Davis. Uh, you got to check her out at Columbia. She's not only a great. Great student, but she's a hell of a basketball player. She was there last year. Yes, yes. We 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 seen Columbia play. The left you know? handed tall, the tall six one light skinned girl with the braids, left hand. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, she's ooh, she's, she's the truth. Yeah, she's a beast. <laughs> yeah, she's a beast. Yeah, she let. Yeah, no, she's only a she's only a sophomore. I had her. I had her for like four years. I've been with her since she was like seven in the seventh grade. She can straight out ball, bro. Oh yeah, then she's tough, her. man. Yeah, then yeah. I had a then I had a twin sister who ended up going to school in Ohio. Then I had a girl, a young lady by the name of Francesca. She ended up going to school in Ohio. So I had, a, I had, you know, I was pretty pleased with my with my out, with my outcome as far as you know, giving these girls an opportunity, and also you know the school did their part because you know you can't play at at Grand's Academy without grades. You oh, know the no, grades, no, no, no. grades is number one <laughs> over there. In fact, they can they, they can go to school just on on academics alone. They're married alone. Yeah, that they don't have to do anything else. Just go to school. <laughs> just go to class. <laughs> go to yeah. class. And go. Yeah, I, I think my wife had a statement up there earlier, Trees. Yeah, I wanted to look at that real quick. Um, uh -huh. It says with the average career length of an NBA player being, or oh, is it that long? <laughs> uh, 4.5 years, a medium salary of $3.8 million. How do you teach these young players about a career post NBA? Well, be smart. Don't go spend 3.8 you know, if, if don't spend the whole three point eight one year, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you got to be smart. I mean, if you look at it, depending on your location, three point eight is only one point five, one point three when the government finished with it. So you can't go out and go buy a two million dollar house when you only got three million in value. Um, I mean, and then you got to watch your money as far as. As far as who, who who your investors are and who and who's handling your money, you know who's your, who's your accountant, who's your who's your who's your agents and stuff like that. Uh, first of all, a lot of these kids are playing with monopoly money anyway. Now, I feel bad, but I don't feel bad if you go through twenty five million dollars when you when you should know better. Mm. You know, you you and I, you and I probably didn't make a million together. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, together in ten years. So yeah. <laughs> I don't feel bad with, with, if you ignorantly don't know what you're doing. If you want to go out and buy five Rolls Royces, two houses, and pay for mom and daddy and all that, there's a there's a way you can do it. Again, uh, 
our life, our, our life expectancy was one year of basketball. So for them to have three years or four years at three point, that's twelve million dollars. I mean, there's enough to go around if mm. you're smart. So I, I advise these kids to be smart, get the bare necessities that you need, and work on the, the next 3.8 years because that's when the money comes. The first mm. one, you ain't getting a whole bunch of money. The second one's when all the money comes, yeah. according to what it is now, where if they would have played when we played, man, uh, one car, <laughs> 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 one apartment, <laughs> Hey, hey, hey it, wasn't a Mercedes, it wasn't a Mercedes Benz it either. Was, it wasn't a Mercedes, a $200 allowance. So, <laughs> so when, you, when you come from humble backgrounds, you know not to go out there and be an idiot and just spend all that money in one shot. Yeah. And, and I also think it's important, too. Um, I, I heard Bishop Jake said, um, you know, a lot of us know how to get in the plane, right? We know how to fly the plane. Right. But we don't know how to land it. Don't know how to land it. You know, we don't we don't know how it ends, you know, because we think we're once we start playing, we're gonna play forever. Right. And no, that's, that, that's and, a great tip. That's yeah, great. And he that's said great. only only person get up in a plane that don't know how to fly it is a terrorist. <laughs> and, and they reckless. And they don't care about life. Yeah, and, and they, they, they yeah. they ready to die. So yeah, yeah, so no, that's a that's a great synopsis, man. But I mean, to your wife's question, man, just be smart, man. Be smart. I mean, be smart. Be humble, and know that if you if you if you do the right things with it, you can advance. You know, like again, we couldn't invest five thousand dollars on anything back in the day because we needed wow. it. Now That's you get. Right. I mean, you got to pick the right things that you know. You got to know. You got to have a. You got to have a hell of a team, and you know what that team is is your family. Stay with your family, and and and, and you'll be okay. Once you leave the family ground, and you leave God's. If you once you leave family and God, you got problems. Yeah, you got well, problems. Yeah. And and I, I think here, yeah, I think the other thing too uh, that that's in, in important, um, and particularly you know, uh, financially. You know, because uh, it's, you know, you have to think about, you know, how the future, what the future holds, you know, in, in terms of your resources. And I love it that you drop the nuggets of dimes on about, you know, knowing, knowing who, uh, who's managing you. Um, and I think one of the, one of the sound advice when my daughter Sherelle, which, you know. Yes, sir. Um, and she was thinking about. Uh, being a physical therapist. And for me, when you say you want to be something for me, my responsibility as a father is to take you someplace in to talk to a physical therapist. Exactly. And um, when I uh, hurt my knee, um, I met a, you know, guy did a great job on my knee. Great physical therapist was working some stuff with that Marvin high school uh, uh, basketball program at that time. And we, we sat down with him and, he said, okay, you want to be a physical therapist, but minor in business. Minor in business. Yeah. He said, you know, you know, a lot of people know how to be a physical therapy therapist, but when when it comes to now, like I gotta I gotta run, I wanna be a business. A lot of people know how to be a physical therapist, but they don't know how to manage their resources. Exactly. Right. So that's why he said, okay, get that, get that degree. In physical therapy or in the, in the master's degree or whatever you're going to get, but minor in business because you got to learn how to manage your resource. And so I, I would say to a young person who's making this kind of money is not only to have some, yeah, family, maybe, maybe, or 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 maybe you got this manager or agent, but you need to be aware of your own your own resources. Yes, that, and, that's totally and, true. Yeah, and what they're doing with it. So, you know, uh, go to college, but minor and think about business. Think about minoring in business and how you manage your resources. Exactly. And never and and for the young persons, never, ever, ever, ever give a lawyer or a business person the power of attorney. That is a no-no. Because as soon <laughs> as you do that, they can do whatever they want with your paper. You have mm. no recourse whatsoever. So if everybody ever say power of attorney, uh -uh. you dump him like a bad habit. That's what you <laughs> do. 
But <laughs> but again, man, I, like you said, it's just like. If we would have known the business of basketball, we would have learned the business of basketball. We just played basketball. Now it's a business. Just like you just mentioned, the business of being a physical therapist. You need to know the business of physical therapist. You can be the best, but there's also the business side. And, right. that, and, and that goes true for anything. There's a business of basketball. There's a business of soccer. There's a business of football. It is all, everything you do, doctors, there's the business side. And yeah. to, to manage the business side, education and being educated will keep you healthy. It'll keep you rich, and you won't have to be worried about where my money went. Instead mm-hmm. of saying, you, uh, instead of him sending you, uh, <laughs> sending you an itemized bill, where he spent more than you did. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. So, so Wes, I want to say thank you, man. I think our time has come to an end. Oh, and man. I want to say thank you. I enjoyed it, man. Thank you for taking yeah. the time out your busy schedule, man. I'm glad you enjoyed Maui and and and, and, and all the brothers from back in the day. Yeah, you know? man. I, but and, ain't nothing like, hey, man, I told you I was running home to do this for you, bro. So you my dude. Uh, if you say I need you out there, and then you know your wife, that's my girl. So you know, so tell her, tell her after this final four, I will be calling you. <laughs> and right, then you man. know, tell Sheree and, and tell yeah, the grand. That, that, that's that's there we go right there. We we went to Jimmy V, the 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 uh, V Foundation golf out yeah. for Jimmy Valvano. Yeah, uh, the v Foundation golf out him. You know, just recently, a few weeks ago. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah man. They was cheating. No, I ain't gonna say they was cheating, but I mean, no, we, we, was, we, 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 we hit well. Hey, and, Belos, we played, well, we played as well as we could, bro. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we played All as well right, as man. we could. But I yeah. love you, man. Thanks for having love me. You too, man. man. No Stay problem. Well. Okay. You too. All right. All right. Peace. All right, everybody. Thank you again for your support, man. I love each and every one of you. Um, you know, thank you guys uh, for coming on each and every week and spending time with us and and uh hey man i love you man i look forward to next week god bless you we don't know who's coming on next week to be announced we don't know whether they're gonna have a special on saturday but uh yeah we'll be back next week and uh you know again i love you guys god bless you and i look forward to next week We really hope you enjoyed this episode of Lowe's Moore, the Blueprint Podcast. Stay connected and follow us at our website, www.lowesmore.com. That's L-O-W-E-S-M-O-O-R-E.com. You can also join the discussion on Twitter at Lowe's Moore and on Facebook at Lowe's Moore Jr. As always, thank you for pushing your mindset towards a better reality. This concludes the most thought-provoking portion of your day. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this podcast to stay fully up to date with everything we're up to. Until next time, be kind to yourself and each other. With the is a joke, I ain't buying it like I'm broke. Insufficient